Welcome one and all to Nordhagen Beach. This is one of my favorite settlements. I just love the location and I love the fact that it's on the beach. So let me give you a quick tour of uh, what I decided to do with my settlement. So first things first, here's the marketplace. And it's uh, set up on this elevated platform which um, keeps the, the stalls from floating. And I decided to use a different layout this time. Uh, instead of doing what I typically do, which is have them line the outside perimeter of of the of the space, I have them back to back, and this is much more space efficient. It allows me to organize them neatly. I don't have them clipping and getting in each other's way, and all of the settlers can stand back here and man their stations, and there's still a path in the middle. So that's what I decided to do with, to do with my marketplace. I've got a um, I've got these new lamps from the Wasteland Workshop lining the four corners of this particular uh, marketplace, and the, it lights it lights it up really well at night. So short, simple, uh, adds light, and it, it's a convenient way for me to connect the wiring throughout the entire settlement. I'm really becoming fond of these tall lights because they not only offer light, but they're extremely tall, which makes it easy to connect power between very large, very tall structures. Um, so, uh, next up, let's talk a little bit about spawn locations. So, as you know, I'm using a mod called the Settlement Management Software to pinpoint on my map where all of the spawn locations are. And here's one of them. And it's smack dab on the middle of the settlement. Like, I had to move this entire defense stand because it was originally stacked right here which would cause the enemies to spawn underneath this wooden structure um, and as you can imagine that's just annoying and the missile turrets won't work and it's frustrating because the majority I, I I'm finding as I'm going through these new settlement builds that I'm doing that 50% of the settlements will have spawn points within the borders of the actual settlement, which increases the risk of you as the player inadvertently building something right on the location where enemies spawn, which means that when you do get attacked, you experience all sorts of weird glitches like enemies clipping through concrete walls or just... It makes me mad. <laughs> it just makes me mad. But I've got one defense stand here. It's uh, fairly simple. I've got two ballistic machine gun turrets, a spotlight, a missile turret, and a heavy laser turret with one settler set to defense in that guard tower. Uh, let's talk a little bit about the other spawn locations. And it's interesting because one is right there. Yeah, that's right. We're standing on top of it. It's under the earth. It's in the earth. Here, let's take a closer look. It's under the earth, and it's it's in the water. It's it's right right on top of the water. And <laughs> I I don't know what this means. Like, does this mean that when enemies spawn, they just sort of drop from the world and splash into the water, and you never hit, you deal with them? Or does this mean that they sort of get pushed to the surface, like like lava coming out of the earth or something, and then they attack you? Or does it mean that it just doesn't work and it's an it's a leftover from some sort of buggy Bethesda glitching? I don't really know, but it ultimately doesn't matter because there's another spawn location right here, just a few yards away. And as you can see, this is clearly accurate. Look at all of the guns and weapons that are littering the the earth here. Mini guns, too many guns down here. Um, yeah, this settlement gets gets a lot of of action, which is why I actually came to fix it up. Um, when I did. So, uh, to take this into consideration, I placed another guard station here with the same thing. One missile turret, one heavy laser turret, two ballistic machine gun turrets, and a spotlight. Um, I have room under here to add three more turrets if necessary. I could even probably put one up there. So, I'm going to actually just, after I finish this settlement, I'm going to wait to see when it gets attacked. And if it ends up being a bit of a struggle the next time I'm attacked, I, I, I may spend more resources to put more there. But I put another guard tower right there. And the other spawn location is right here, which is right in the middle of the beach. So two of the four spawn locations, one of which doesn't even work, it's underground, two of the, spore, uh, the four spawn locations for this settlement are within the boundaries of the settlement, which means that you can't 
you can't use this settlement plot to build like a castle or, or something with solid walls that span the entire thing. You can't do that because the enemies actually spawn inside. Um, I had that shack in the distance there. That was plopped right on top of this when I first made it. And so I, of course, had to move it so I could set up my defenses. Uh, otherwise, your defenses will start shooting missiles at your resources, which can then break them because the missile turrets do area of effect damage. So I've set up this tall structure here, one missile turret, one heavy laser turret, two ballistic machine gun turrets, and a spotlight. I, I think you can see a pattern emerging. And then I've got one guard tower right here. Um, Brahmin in the corner, eating from their feeding troughs, floating in the air as they typically tend to do. And I'm not sure how I can change that. I'll work on it. Uh, this is my generator room. So it's not quite as compact and small as I used as I like to make these. Uh, which is actually kind of nice due to all the space that I have in the settlement. I can open it up and plop down another small um, generator as necessary if I, if I need more power for lights or something. Uh, but this is the very first generator shack that I made for one of my settlements. And uh, it turns out great. It turned out great, I think. Um, I like this broken door. I've got the wire coming out of the broken door so that I can have a closed door and yet uh, it's still connected. Um, and then this is just the shack that came with the settlement. Nothing terribly exciting here. I've got a, a guard dog, uh, I've got a guard dog right there in the doghouse. I'm gonna be putting up traps to get some more. Here's my farm. Now the farm originally came with this super small plot covered in pumpkins, which wasn't enough to to feed a, a settlement of 36 people. So I did have to extend it, but uh, I extended it with carrots, as you know, because I don't like tall crops. It makes it hard to select your settlers. And I ran out of room in this sort of light colored earthy square. So I did have to start placing the sand, but I ended up making it a bit of a square. And I decided against putting a fence around it because it just adds all sorts of issues. When you add fences to the game, it means your settlers are forced to re rewire their pathing routes on the fly, and it just adds a whole bunch of weird things. So I left it open this time. Nothing terribly exciting in here. It's got the three beds that came with this settlement, and then I placed down my terminal so that I can see the spawn points. Let's go ahead and turn off those markers. There we go. Okay, that leaves only the main house. So uh, I actually put a little bit of thought into this shack. Instead of dotting three or four shacks around the area, I put all of the settlers in one giant shack. And I did that on purpose because I wanted to leave the view. And yes, it's a cloudy day right now, and I'm sad about that. I wish I wish you could see the view because you can see all the way across to the other side. But uh, I decided to give them a nice elevated shack with a view of the water. So you come in inside, and yeah, it's like a barracks. You have all of these people crowded in, but um, it's necessary to save space, which is why it's an efficiency build. And then you look out here, and you've got a beautiful view of the water. Again, the uh, the, the the weather's not working in my favor right now. And I don't have the console command memorized to change the weather, so sorry about that. But you, but they, the settlers at least get a nice view of the ocean from their deck. All they have to do is wake up in the morning and come out here onto the deck where they can enjoy the view for a short period of time before heading to work. And I suppose I can imagine this is their breakfast and coffee area, which is why I actually put some time into decorating it. We've got a bread box here with a toaster, a coffee station with potted meats and moldy foods and coffee in the coffee cups. They've even got a tea kettle for those who like tea. A smoking station to give them their first relaxing smoke of the morning. <clears throat> and of course this is the post-apocalyptic future, so I'm sure there's not going to be any political correct nonsense about uh, you know, smoking 20 feet away from a door. Eh. And so on and so forth. Goodness, wow. I don't know what it is that's making my FPS go down right as I walk this way. That's weird. All right, um, I should probably put a door on this, huh? One thing I forgot to do. There are a variety of new doors in the game, which I like. And this is a nice breezy settlement. So how about a screen door? 
It's right on the beach. They have a nice screen door. You can open the screen door and see the water. And then I pushed the water purifier out as far into the water as I could, uh, just so that it didn't look like it was embedded in the sand. That doesn't make any sense to me. It needs to be able to pump water, so I pushed that out there pretty far. And that's it. Uh, pretty simple, straightforward. Like all of my efficiency builds, it doesn't get crazy. It just gives the settlers what they need. Let's take a look at my uh, vital stats here. 36 food, 40 water. I'm taking advantage of it being an oceanfront settlement uh, to generate purified water, uh, which I can then sell for caps. Uh, and uh, 137 defense, which is, I think, I hope it's going to be plenty of defense, and 36 beds. And my happiness is doing well. It says it's going up. Let's take a look with the mod and see where my happiness is going to end up with this exact setup. All right, happiness is at 86, and my target happiness is at 88.97. So uh, I'm going to start collecting dogs to increase my happiness even more, and I'll try to figure out ways to get it above 90. But this is the core of the settlement, so there you go. Hope you enjoy it. Hope it inspires you for your own Nordhagen Beach settlement. Thanks for watching.